Hello all, I am Dr. Rakesh Duba, Consultant, Interventional Cardiologist and Electrophysiologist, Care Hospitals, Ramnagar and Arlova. Today I am going to uh, discuss a few points about Cardiac Electrophysiology. Cardiac Electrophysiology is a branch of cardiology which deals with the uh, electrical system of the heart and the problems involving the electrical system of the heart are called as arrhythmias. So what are arrhythmias? Arrhythmias can be in the form of either increase in the heart rate which are called as tachyarrhythmias. Tachyarrhythmias can be of two types. One is supraventricular tachycardia wherein the abnormal heartbeat arises from the upper chambers of the heart or also known as atria. Or the second thing is the ventricular tachycardia wherein the abnormal heartbeat arises from the lower chambers of the heart or the ventricular tachycardia. Second type of arrhythmias are the decrease in the heart rate which is called as bradycardia. And the third uh, type of arrhythmia is irregularity of the heartbeat also known as atrial fibrillation. So what are the various symptoms of arrhythmias? So when a patient is have suffering from arrhythmia, the patient can have various manifestations of the uh, disease like he can have a racing of the heartbeat also known as palpitations wherein the patient will be aware of his own heartbeat. Second thing is along with the palpitations he can have associated giddiness or uh, reeling sensation and associated chest discomfort or sweatings and difficulty in breathing. And these are most commonly seen with uh, supraventricular tachycardias. And bradyarrhythmias can present as syncope or sudden loss of consciousness which is a transient phenomenon. And ventricular arrhythmias also can present as uh, palpitations or syncope or they can the uh, sudden cardiac arrest can be an initial manifestation of ventricular tachycardia. So what are the various uh, causes of arrhythmias? Tachyarrhythmias can be because of hypertension or because of coronary artery disease or because of valvular problems like mitral stenosis or mitral regurgitation or some sometimes genetic conditions known as cardiomyopathies can also lead to tachyarrhythmias. Bradyarrhythmias by and large are because of uh, degenerative changes in the cardiac electrical system and atrial fibrillation is because of it can be hyperthyroidism, hypertension, excessive alcoholism, excessive smoking or coronary artery disease or even aging process can also lead to atrial fibrillation. What are the various uh, tests to diagnose arrhythmias? So the first and foremost and easiest test to diagnose arrhythmia is electrocardiography. Electrocardiography when done when the patient is having palpitations will give us an idea of what is ex what exactly is going on within the heart and the other pa uh, tests which can be done are halter monitoring for patients who have infrequent symptoms and the other pa routine uh, investigations like 2D transthoracic echocardiography, treadmill test and uh, other blood parameters can be done. Once diagnosed to be having cardiac arrhythmia, what is the next step? The next step is to the there are three modalities of uh, treatment. One is medications wherein we will initiate medications to control the heartbeat. The second thing is electrophysiology study and radiofrequency ablation which is predominantly done for uh, supraventricular tachycardias and ventricular tachycardias and atrial fibrillation. And device therapy can be done like uh, when the patient is having an history of sudden cardiac arrest or aborted sudden cardiac arrest. In an implantable cardioverter defibrillator can be done in patient who had an episode of ventricular tachycardias. And for bradyarrhythmias, the uh, initial, uh, the, the more only treatment is implantation of a pacemaker, permanent pacemaker. For patients who have been diagnosed to be having atrial fibrillation, the important thing which needs to be uh, taken into consideration is the risk of uh, brain stroke or cerebrovascular accidents. For assessing the uh, risk of a cerebrovascular accident, there are several scoring systems which uh, can be done. And if the scoring, if the score is high, the patient needs to be on oral anticoagulants, which prevents the formation of blood clots in the left side of the heart and thereby prevention of the cerebrovascular accident.